of Maqatil that when Abbas alayhi salam was dealt the final blow upon his head by the iron pillar when Abbas alayhi salam fell to the grounds and he called out why did he call out Ya Hussein? why did Abbas call out Ya Hussein instead of Ya Sayyidi for his whole life he called out Ya Sayyidi Umm al banin raised Abbas alayhi salam forever to call him Ya Sayyidi why did Abbas during these moments call out Ya Hussein? It is said because during these moments he saw his mother Fatima alayhi salam. She said, I accept. I accept from you these two severed hands of Abu Abbas. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a story that I wish to share with you. Do you know the maqam of Abbas alayhi salam? Everybody that visits Sayyidah Shuhada alayhi salam must visit Abu Fadl al-Abbas. Subhanallah. Meaning every merit connected to Karbala is connected to Abbas alayhi salam. It is narrated by the scholars of Karbala, some of the scholars of Karbala, that there used to be a man that used to visit the shrine of Sayyid al-Shuhada three times in one day. He would visit the shrine of Sayyid al-Shuhada three times in a day for an entire week. But he would never make time for Abbas. He would never make time for Abbas. And one day he saw in his dream a Sayyid of Fatima to Zahra. <laughs> he saw in his dream a Sayyid of Fatima to Zahra. السلام, and she was not looking at him. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> she was not looking at him while he was visiting Imam Al Hussein السلام, three times in one day. She said to her, He said to her, Ya Sayyidati, Ya Mawlati, I visit you every single, I visit your son every single day. More than once I visit your son, Sayyidah Shuhada. Why won't you look at me? Imagine, imagine seeing Fatima alayhi salam and she does not look at you. Just imagine seeing Fatima alayhi salam and she does not look at you. That would be the worst punishment, I swear to God. I would rather be burned in the fires of hell than not receive a salam from Fatima alayhi salam. She told him, I don't look at you and I don't send you back my salams. Why? Because when you go to the ziyarah of my son, you neglect the ziyarah of my son. What do you mean you neglect the ziyarah of your I visit your son every day. She said, no, you did not visit my son Abbas. You did not visit my son Abbas. And that is why on the day of judgment, Fatima alayhi salam, Fatima alayhi salam on the day of judgment, there was a specific place for Abbas alayhi salam with his two hands. We all know what happens on the Day of Judgment. Now I want you, I want to take you back to Karbala. I want to take you back to Karbala. I want you to keep on crying. I want you to keep on crying. Today is about Umm al-Banin and today is about Fatima alayhi salam. There is a story that I want to narrate to you. This story is very, very difficult to take. And I apologize to Sahib al-Asri was the one. Did you know that al-Abbas alayhi salam was not the only one in Karbala that had his hands cut off? 
there was a man by the name of Al-Jamal. Al-Jamal was a man who used to be the caretaker of the camels of Sayyid al-Shuhada. He used to be the one who used to take care of the camels of Sayyid al-Shuhada. This man himself narrates this incident. He says that I used to take care of the camels of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Now pay attention. I used to take care of the camels of Sayyid al-Shuhada. When Sayyid al-Shuhada would stop for prayer, he would take off his aba and then he had a belt. It's called a takka in Arabic. A belt that they would wear over the, the, the sirwa that they would have in order to put their sword in and sheathe in their sword. It's called a takka. He said, Sayyid al-Shuhada had this beautiful takka. Every time I look at it, it illuminates with light. It illuminates with light. Then he says on the day of Ashura, now take yourself towards the day of Ashura. Everybody has been martyred. All the heads have been severed. All there is left is bodies and bodies on the floor. Bodies on the floor. This man, al Jaman, says, I hid myself in between the bodies in order that when the army of Yazid and Amr ibn Sa'ad when they are in there, they won't find me. So they won't cause me trouble. He said, I stayed there. Look how long he stayed. So when did the army of Yazid leave? Karbala, they left on the 11th of Muharram. He was staying for a long time amongst the dead bodies. Why? Why was he staying amongst the dead bodies? You'll see why. You'll see why. He said, after the army of Yazid left, I got up and I began to look around. Now was my time to take the belt of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Allahu Akbar. Sayyid al-Shuhada is the master of generosity. Why could you not ask Sayyid al-Shuhada for the belt? He would have given it to you. He says, I start walking around, I start walking around, I'm looking for Sayyid al-Shuhada. I see a light from afar. The light of Hussein alayhi salam illuminating Karbala. The light of Hussein illuminating Karbala. I walked and I walked and I saw Sayyid al-Shuhada and I was thinking to myself, look at what greed does to you. Look at what greed does. He wants the materialistic he says, I wish, I hope nobody took the belt of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Because you know, the ring they took off, and they couldn't take off the ring because they had to cut off the finger of Sayyid al-Shuhada. They took off his turban. They took off his aba. They did not leave anything for Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam. He came and he saw that the belt was still on, wrapped around the stomach of Sayyid al-Shuhada. He said to himself, now what do I do? How can I remove it? He tried to unravel the knot, he could not unravel a knot on the belt. He said that he found a piece of a sword, a piece of a sharp sword. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut it and take it with me. During this moment, as soon as he wanted to put his hand in order to cut it, the hand of Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam went on his hand and he said, I could not move my hand. So I took the piece and I began to cut the hand of Sayyid al-Shuhada. I started with his right hand. I thought, that's it. He will grab it. put his hand again. So I went for the left, and again, the hand of Sayyid al-Shuhada grabs my hand. Again, I took the broken piece of the sword, and I began to cut the hands of Sayyid al-Shuhada, alayhi salam. The story is very long, the story continues, and then Rasulullah comes and curses this man. So you see, say the Shuhada also lost his hands on Karbala, not just Abbas. The, the pain that Sayyid Shuhada felt on Karbala, honestly, it's hard to narrate. How many wounds on the body of Sayyid Shuhada? How many wounds on the body of Sayyid Shuhada? Do you know why? All of this happened, Sayyid al-Shuhada? Do you think they, they killed Sayyid al-Shuhada because him rising against Yazid ibn Muawiyah? No. He, they even say, they even say in their speeches, they say, نَحْنُ نُقَاتُلُكَ بُخْضًا لِأَبِيكَ They have a problem with Ali ibn Abi Talib. They have a problem with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Just like today. 1400 years till today, people still have a problem with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now our Sheikh blessed us with a beautiful majlis. What did he say about Ali ibn Abi Talib? What did he tell you about Ali ibn Abi Talib? 
Now it's your responsibility, and on the day of judgment, if you do not go and narrate this, you'll be responsible. Now when somebody comes to you, why can't you be proud and say that I am a Shi'i? I don't understand, why have we become so weak? What happened to the Shi'a? What happened to the Shi'a, tell me? What happened to the Shi'a that used to when they would walk in Baghdad? The Mukhalifin would shake in fear. That was in a time where Ben Abbas used to be the governors of that era. What happened to our ulama like Shaykh Al-Mufid and Shaykh Al-Saduq and Allama Al-Majlis Rahmatullahi Alayhim? My dear brothers and sisters, don't be scared of Haq. Do you know what Haq meant? What Haq is? Haq is truth. Haq is truth. Don't fall into the abyss of doubt like we said a couple of days ago. You are with Haq. Rasulullah says, Ali al haqqi wal haqqum a'ali yaduru ma'ahu haythu ma'dar. What does that mean? Everywhere there's Ali, there's Haq. Everywhere there's Haq, there's Ali. You cannot, you cannot go anywhere else. You cannot go anywhere else. You have Ali ibn Abi Talib. Do you know what that means? Means your birth was a pure birth. That's the first thing you do today when you go home. You go and you thank your mother and your father. If your mother and father are not here today, you go and recite a surah Fatiha for your mother and father. You are here today because you drank from the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And your mother's before you. The hadith, do you know what the hadith says? The hadith says, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, that when Allah wishes to create a believer, what does he do? There he says, there is a tree in the heavens called Al-Muzun. This tree in the heaven, what would happen to it? It would begin to drop droplets of water. When this water droplet falls on the fruits and vegetables, and your parents ate from these fruits and vegetables. This in their loins, it says even if a kafir eats from this, and this defines, this gives us a definition behind how, for example, somebody like Hur, or somebody like uh, Sa'd al-Khair al-Umawi. Sa'd al-Khair al-Umawi, do you know who this person is? Sa'd al-Khair al-Umawi was from Bani Umayyah, from the accursed tree. Sa'd al-Khair al-Umawi, Amma Sadiq says, you are from us, Ahlul Bayt. Because Allah alam, this drop of water that came from the heavens fell and he was born a believer. Because you know why? The story of Sa'd al-Khair al umawi is a very beautiful story. That was, that's why I say to many, many of my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guys, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in mysterious ways. Sa'd al-Khair al umawi imagine, imagine right now, imagine that your family, your forefathers was Bani Umayya. Imagine. Just, just for one second, imagine. What would go through your mind? Whereas at the same time you know and you truly know that you love Al Muhammad, true or no? True. He used to sit and cry. He used to sit and cry, and he went to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He says to him, Ya Ba Abdullah, you know who I am and you know who my forefathers are. And he reads Ziyarat Ashura, it says, Allahumma al bani umayyata qatibatan. And Ziyarat Ashura says, May Allah curse Abani Umayyah forever. So whoever comes from the lineage of Bani Umayyah, May Allah curse them all. The Imam answered to him. He answered this question to him. When he, when he asked this question, the Imam said, Ya Sa'ad, ya Sa'ad you are different from everybody else. You are like that limestone that we use to build a house. We, make, we mix many materials in our mixture. And then when the hard water hits, it gets rid of all the excess materials and leaves just the beautiful left block of limestone. That's what you are. Your family is the trash left behind. So be careful. Be careful and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you are right now. We were born Muslim. We were born Muslim. We're lucky. Our dear brother had to go through, through so much pain to come where he is right now. He had to go through so much pain to come where he is right now. And I swear to God, we take this, we take this for granted. I swear to God, we take this for granted. How come we don't open a book and read? How hard is it to open a book and read? How hard is it to open a book and read? Please tell me how hard is it to open a book and read? How hard is it to read one hadith like he said? One hadith. Imagine in 365 days, you have written a hundred, 365 days in, 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 in one year, you go publish this book. You go share this book online. Do you know, do you know what happens, by the way, when you write the Fabad of Ali ibn Abi Talib? You've heard the hadith, and I'll repeat it for you. I'll repeat it. فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعَ The person that takes this, this, this pen and writes a narrative of Ali ibn Abi Talib, رُوحِ لَهُ الْفِدَاءِ 
It says that for every letter you write, for every letter you breathe, for every letter you recite, there are angels surrounding you doing istighfar for you. There are angels repenting for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is building for you mansions and castles in heaven and where you're sitting here. Do you know that the believer who believes in the wilayah of Ali ibn Abi Talib is a hadith by the way. Some may think this is hilarious and may cast doubt upon it. It says that for every hair on your body that you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds for you a castle in heaven just by believing in the wilayah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. I can go on and on and on. The fada'al of Ali ibn Abi Talib, I swear to God, you can repeat them day and night. Day and night. You will never get enough. How can you get enough from this man? How can anybody get enough of Ali ibn Abi Talib? So you have Ali ibn Abi Talib. Baba Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad Sadiq says there was a Jewish man who never believed in Islam, but all he did was have the hub, the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. In hellfire he was put, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not burn him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not burn a Jewish man who possessed the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, we're Muslim. Alhamdulillah. We testify to the wilayah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Inshallah, he won't burn us in the fires of hell. Because we drank from the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib, from our mother's bosoms at a very young age. Because when our mother gave us birth, she said, Ya Ali, everything is Ya Ali. Everything is Ya Ali. Because Ali created us. Our creation began with Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Ali and Muhammad. He says, you know what, Ya Ali, Ya Muhammad, here's everything. I've given you my wilayah taqwiniyya. You have authority over all existence. You begin the creation of mankind. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib. Don't ever, ever step down from haq. Please, know where you are right now in this majlis. What did we say on the first day? The names that are being recorded on the day of judgment when Fatima looks on your forehead when it says believer and non-believer and she gives you path towards heaven. Or when Allah Sadiq alayhi salam says, إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَتْ فَاطِمَ لَأَنَّ فَاطِمَ شِيَعَتَهَا وَمَنْ مِنْ مِنَ النَّارِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named her Fatima because she weaned her lovers from the fires of hell. Or the fact that she is named Fatima because the example of Fatima on the day of judgment is like that bird that comes and feeds their children and gives them food one by one and protects them. Our mother Fatima, on the day of judgment, when we're placed in this entire huge hole, when everybody is pushing and shoving, Fatima alayhi salam will come and say, this is my Shi'i, this is my Shi'i, and this is my Shi'i. That's what Fatima alayhi salam will do for us on the day of judgment. But of course, with its conditions, and we mentioned many times the conditions, your furu, your usul must be thabit, must be concrete. Your respect towards your parents, your respect towards your elders, your respect to anybody it may be. Your salah on time, like the Sheikh said, your salah on time, don't let it bundle up and become two, three, four years of salah. Because shaitan knows what he's doing, by the way. In the Quran, what does it say? What happens in the Quran when, 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 when the incident happened with Adam alayhi salam and Eve? What happened? And then Satan showed his envy and his greed and he said, you created Adam from sand and freed me from fire, I am better than him. And then he was erected from, from the heaven. Satan, who used to do two rak'at of prayer 6,000 years. Two rak'at of prayer. And two rak'at of prayer, do Salat al-Fajr, how long is it? Three minutes? Satan used to spend 6,000 years in prayer. What did he say after to Allah? He says, I will misguide all of them, except those who are truly faithful to Allah. Now I want to ask you one question before we begin mourning Prophet Zara alayhi salam and beating our chest. An honest answer I want. Who is winning right now, Satan or us? Satan is winning. Because look at the world right now. The majority of the world, are there believers or non-believers? Satan is beating us. How unfortunate that Satan is winning. And with time, it's only going to get harder and harder. The closer we are to the arrival of the Imam, Sahab al-Asr al-Zaman, Allah 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 Allah
it's going to get harder and harder, harder and harder. Which is why the time that you live in is the most difficult of times. But at the same time, the best of times. And by the way, to leave you with this last story, inshallah, and we will begin beating our chest for Fatima alayhi salam. Once a man saw Habib ibn Mudahir in his dreams. Habib ibn Mudahir al-Asadi, he saw him in his dreams. And he was asked, Ya Habib, tell me what was the best thing or what is the best thing that you have after, right now in your afterlife. He says, well, the best thing I have is I am in paradise and I've been given this maqam and I've been given this shrine and so on and so forth. But he then said that I, there is one thing that I wish I had, one thing, one thing, I want one thing, is that I wish that I can attend the majalis of Sayyidah Shuhada. And do you know who Habib ibn Mubahir is? We said to you who, who Habib ibn Mubahir is. Baba Habib ibn Mubahir has a shrine by himself. Every za'ir must come and say salam to Habib at the end because Habib, as we know, is the one who records our names. Habib wishes he could be here right now with you. So again, when you're when you when we're done today, you give the majlis, this majlis to Umm al-Bareen, to say the Fatima and Habib as well. Since we mentioned him, we give him as well this majlis with Fatima Zahra alayhi salam and with Umm al-Bareen. Arwahuna lahum al fida. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah.